In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When you're known in Scripture by your occupation, it typically isn't a good thing. And so, she was a prostitute. But there is more to the story of Rahab than just her occupation. The Israelites were on the doorstep of the Promised Land, One of their final major hurdles was the city of Jericho. And as Moses had previously sent spies into the land flowing with milk and honey, Joshua now sends two more into Jericho. We're not sure why the spies went to Rahab's house, but it makes perfect sense. Where else would two foreign men be welcomed than in the house of a prostitute? But it was there the spies would receive all the intel they needed. Rahab told them, I know that the Lord has given this land to you and that a great fear of you has fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Sion and Og the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted and everyone's courage failed because of you, for the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. History had taught Rahab and all of Jericho the kind of God they were up against. Bloodshed and destruction marked Israel's path from Egypt to Jerusalem, and now, led by their God, Jericho was next. And yet, knowing all of this, Rahab asks for kindness. A God she only knew to be powerfully destructive now is her only hope for mercy. So Rahab hides the spies when messengers from Jericho's king comes asking questions. She safely sneaks them out of her house in the city in in similar fashion to the Passover the spies instruct Rahab to tie a scarlet cord marking her house so that when the Israelites sack the city, all who were in her house would be spared. Her house wasn't marked with blood, but it might as well have been. Why did Rahab go through all this trouble and risk her life, lie, and commit treason against her own nation for two men she just met? Centuries later, we're told why in the book of Hebrews. By faith. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. The Lord had turned Rahab's fear into faith, her trembling into trust. He took this prostitute and used her to accomplish his purposes. Not just in sparing the spies and eventually bringing down the walls of Jericho, We're told at the end of Joshua chapter 6 that God kept his promise made through the spies and spared Rahab and her family too, and that she lived among the Israelites from that day forward. That in and of itself would be an amazing story of rescue and redemption. But it wasn't enough for God to have this former prostitute simply living among God's people. God in his wisdom would use Rahab to bless God's people. In the opening chapter of Matthew's Gospel, we're given the genealogy of Jesus. In it, a handful of women are mentioned. One is the woman who married the great great grandfather of King David. Her name? Rahab. Rahab the prostitute. From the womb of a virgin, the Savior was born but it was from the womb of a prostitute the line of the Savior would be preserved. How awesome is our God's mercy and his plans beyond tracing out? Who would think to include a prostitute in bringing Christ into the world? 
who would think to include you into God's family of believers? Only the Lord your God, who is God in heaven above and on earth below, the God whose mercies are new every morning, the God who sends his Son to die for sinners, for prostitutes, for you. September 30th is also the day the church remembers St. Jerome, who is probably best known for his Latin translation of the Bible, the Vulgate, which was the most and arguably most important translation for centuries in the church. Among his many other works, one of his most well-known quotations is this, Even if you were the only human being on earth, Christ would still have died for you. We see in Rahab how important God considers and the mercy he has on each individual soul. Brother, sister, that comfort is for you and for your soul as well. We pray. Gracious Lord God in heaven above and on earth below, thank you for the grace and mercy you have and continue to show to your people what joy we have in knowing that you find people in every place of their lives and through your powerful spirit you make them your own by faith. Preserve in us that faith, though we are daily attacked, that we might one day rejoice in your eternal presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.